Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is part three of order. So I feel like everybody's life should be in order. Are we there? That was a little, was a little suspect. Everybody's giggling. Um, I have a question. And I want somebody from the crowd to answer me. That's not Simone's because I'm not, I don't want, I don't want his answer. Um, when you hear the word of God in message form from the pulpit or YouTube or the 60 second clip on Instagram, if you still do that and have blatantly disobeyed me by not deleting every single social media app on your phone. Do you treat it as common and familiar? It's time to wake up. <laughs> Literally. No, I'm asking the question like I want to know. Because I see a lot of people like not taking notes and I'm like, you, like you come in and you receive the word of God and I just want to know what you do with it on the back end. Because if you can answer that question, if you can answer that question, you can answer a lot about the order of your life, and the substance of order is what? Oh my gosh. Have you guys been here the last two weeks? Fasting. (laughs) The substance of order is priority, is your priorities, right? Everything has a substance. You can't have prosperity without having the substance of prosperity. We've given you that definition, right? Right? Divine order. When things are in divine order, they thrust forward in the midst of adversity. That's the definition. So it's like, well, I want to prosper. Well, it has nothing to do with your finances. It has to do with every area of your life. Prosperity has to do with every area of your life. To move forward humbly in the midst of adversity in divine order. That's the Hebrew word, right? To have peace, the root word of peace is also order. To put something in order to make it whole or complete. The root word of your of your salvation is not a one-time deal. It actually comes in verb form. It is a process. It means to make you whole by rescuing you, by delivering you, by making you physically whole, emotionally whole, to deliver you from destruction, from death. So the lowest view of salvation is I'm going to heaven because that means that all the work is done, which removes human responsibility, which is the third phase of salvation, which is sanctification, which is your human responsibility that you, you, you separate yourself from the world. And if things aren't in priority, we won't handle the Word of God properly. What does the Word of God say about handling the Word of God? It says, I will look on this man or woman. This is is God talking in Isaiah 57. This is the man or woman who I will look upon, who is humble and contrite, shapeable, teachable, moldable, and that trembles at my word. How do you handle the word of God? I just want to know how you handle the word of God. I want to know how you handle the word of God. I want to challenge you on how you handle God's word because it is him. It says it's him. That's what the word says about the word. That's what the word says about the word. I'm going to give you some divine order things. John 14, 6 says this, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if we put that in order, how do you get to God? How do you get to God? Through Jesus, right? You can't have one without the other. Does everybody understand the order? Okay. I've got some guys, I have any guys in here that play for me? So Reed did, Reed did. So Reed, did you get mad at me a few times? And, like, what would I have done to you? Because I'm, I'm clearly tougher than you are. I coached you, so we know that, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, like, in every area of your life. I would own you. Like, if you got mad at me and went to my athletic director before you came to me, like, would that be the proper order? Are you guys tracking with me r- right now? I, I'm just, I, 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 one, I wanted to dominate Reed for a second because I had the microphone um, for everything he put me through over the course of the nine years that he wouldn't graduate. 
But to get to the Father, you have to go through Jesus. Does that make sense? Like, you can't get prosperity without being in the You can cry out, God, make me, make me prosper. You can cry out, God, put everything in order. Or you can sit down and you can write out your priorities. Or you can take notes, and the first thing you do, if your priorities are right, is go back and study the Word of God that was delivered to you. Oh, but I got, I, but I got distracted. There were so many other, I had so many other things this week. I know. And, and the devil can't destroy you. He just can't. If he could, he already would have. But he can distract you. And he can create the right distractions so that you can destroy yourself. That's how he destroys you. Right? Like, whenever I talk to people that have porn addiction, like, they didn't know the first time they looked at it, like, 20 years later, that it would be destroying every area of their life. Like, eliminating job opportunities because they're lazy and slothful and, and, and destroying their marriage. And now they're not even living in the same home with their kids because they got a divorce, a, 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 a divorce, divorce. It diverged because that one thing absolutely destroyed them. Are you guys tracking with me? How important is order in your life? Man, whenever your life is in order, whenever the priorities are right, you handle the word of God properly. It says, this is, this is the person who I will look upon, who trembles at my word, that takes the word of God serious, that takes the word serious, that takes the word serious. The Bible says this in John 1.1. 1, 1. I'm going to put some things in order for you. And the word, Christ, became flesh and lived among us. The word, who was the word? Jesus, he became flesh, lived among us, and we actually saw his glory. Glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. In the beginning was the word, Jesus. And the word, Jesus, was with God. And the word, Jesus, was God. You're holding God. You're holding Jesus. I guess on your iPhone, some of you. I don't, I don't read the word often on my iPhone. I read it out of a Bible. But whenever you're holding the word of God, I want you to understand. If it's common and familiar to you, I just want to challenge you a little bit on the order of your life. Are your priorities, like how do you handle the word of God? Just, I, want to, I want to know how you handle the word of God. Because it is Jesus. You are flesh that is supposed to become the word. Are you guys tracking with me? We read it, we apply it, we become it. The Bible says this in order. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Which, ones did he, which one did he create first? The heavens and then the earth. The heavens and then the earth. So which one is priority? The heavens. So the most important thing is heaven. And you're only here temporarily, right? You came from heaven. You're passing through. It's like, this is what your life, life looks like. You're like, we're, we're down here. Like, you guys get it? Heaven's up here, we come, we, we pass through, we go back, we ascend back upward. So the heavens are the most important thing. And your job, whenever you're here, is to bring heaven to earth. To bring heavenly things to earth. And how do you do that? Well, yeah, you've got to get in the word. And you've got to understand this. The most important things in your life are the things that you cannot see. There is a spiritual realm which you cannot see. It's the most important realm. There is a natural realm which you can see. It's the least important realm. The most important things in your life are developed in the spiritual and manifest into the natural. Track with me for a second. This is super important. You have things that are in your life that you cannot see. Job opportunity, relationship, finances, they're there. You can't see them. You may not be able to touch them. You may not be able to get your hands on them. If you're single, that, that husband or wife is out there. They're out there. Don't touch them inappropriately before you get married if you meet them, okay? But they're out there. It's going to manifest. And how you're living your life right now is dictating how those things manifest from the spiritual into the natural. 
Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians four eighteen says this. So if we fix our eyes, we, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, not what you can see. Don't don't look at what you can see. I can see this. It already has form. It's not important. It's already we've we've already done this. Does everybody understand? This has form. We have already formed this. Does everybody understand? It has form. The most important things in your life are in formation. Coming from a spiritual place into a natural place. Apply it to whatever you want. If you're married, your marriage is going to, it's in formation. You have, a, you have a best friend, formulate that relationship. You have a job, it's in formation. And how you form it is going to manifest. What does that mean? Well, it's going to determine your next promotion. Because God's looking at everything. And how you form it in the spiritual is going to do what? It's going to form you. Promotable behavior demands promotion. It is what it is. Like you can't hold back promotion because it doesn't come from man. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't, don't look to the north or south or east or the west. Don't look at man. It comes from God above because he sees everything. He sees everything's in the spiritual. And we look at natural things. We think that to get promoted, like we, like the world like steps on people to try to get promoted. And like they work harder whenever the boss is there. I don't, it's so far outside of my, I'm giving you an example. There's so many things that we can apply this to, right? Your health, it's in formation. It's in the spiritual. Your mind, it's in the spiritual. Who can, who's, who's ever seen their mind? Have you ever seen your mind? Have you ever seen your mind? Have you ever seen your mind? The most important things are things that you cannot see. Have you ever seen love? Point number one, order determines how we manage things. If you manage things well, God will give you more. Because the word of God says this. I'm going to start with the, with the end, okay, and then we're going to get there. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he does have, will be taken away. If you manage things well, money, if you manage it well, you'll have more. Relationships, marriage, children, whenever you guys get older, you don't manage your children well, you lose them. I mean, think about it. You guys were children at one point. How many times have you, uh, a little bit with mom and dad? It's like, yeah. And there's some mom and dads out there that have made bad decisions. They've lost children. They lost relationship with children. Yes or no? Yes or no? You may be one of them. You may be one that was like, I've got to get away from a parent. Mentors, businesses, your education. I just, just think about things that you manage. Your prayer life. You don't manage it, you can lose it. It'll never grow. It comes in seed form, your relationship with Jesus. You don't manage it, you can lose it. You can walk right away from it. I don't believe you can lose your salvation, but I believe that you can lose your relationship with Jesus. Once you're in, I, I believe you're in. I don't want to talk about once saved, always saved right now. But the point is, the most important things of your life, they're in formation. You can't see them. Now think about how they're going to be formed. Think about the words that you speak. Think about the way you pray. Think about the way you handle the word of God. Think about how much, the, how much wisdom the word of God has pertaining the thing that's in formation. That we don't think about because we're not studying the word, because we're not in the word. That thing's going to manifest. I can tell you, I'm old. I'm old. I'm almost, age enjoy me while I'm here. I'm like aging out. You know what I mean? Like eventually I'm not going to have like, uh, I'm not going to be relatable anymore. I'm going to have to like talk to somebody older than uh, 20 year olds. They're, they're in form. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I see people just destroy their marriage. I, nothing will frustrate me more if a man stands in front of me and starts talking about their wife. Because there's power in your words. You'll eat good the fruit of your lips. You're destroying your marriage right now. One, I don't gossip, so I'm not your guy. I'm not your guy. Don't come to me to gossip. And if you're gossiping, you're probably complaining. And you guys know how I feel about complaining. Complainers are remainers. There was a word in between there. You know, the Israelites complain, they remain forever. Forty years meandering around, and the dis God's goal is for our life to go like that. The Israelites did this because they were complainers, and complainers are soft. Things, things happen for you. They don't happen to you. Lose the victim mentality. Lose that. 
everything in your life. God will work it out for your good. That means it's happened for you. Well, yeah, God didn't intend that to happen. There's things God didn't intend to happen, but it happened for you because you know God, and he's going to work it out for your good. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house, and he sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him. So he got into the boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. Like, I'm like the sower right now. You guys got like, I'm like sowing the weed, seed, or weed. And he sowed some weed, it fell by the wayside, and the birds came in and devoured it. Later, you'll read that the bird was like Satan, and he came in, and he snatched the seed up. So you guys are seeing like the seed's the word of God, right? You guys are tracking with me? So, so the soil is your heart. So I'm throwing the seed, and it's landing on different hearts. All of you have a different heart. Some are soft, some are supple, some are hard, some are hardened, some are depressed, some are oppressed. The, everybody's got a different heart. Is everybody tracking with me? So the seed that's being thrown right now, some of us take the word of God real serious, and it takes root. Some of us don't. Everybody understand? Every, all of us have a different heart. So we're all interacting with the word of God differently. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, right? You ever dropped a seed on a rock? And they immediately sprang up but because they had no depth of earth. Whenever the sun came, some trials, some tribulations, and they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. just died out. The word started to grow and just died out. It started to grow, but we didn't really take it serious enough. So there was really no depth. There was really no depth to keep it grounded, to keep it growing, to produce any type of fruit that mattered. So over time, it was like, man, I was in church for four to six. I was spending God for like three weeks, and then I took six or seven months off. Is everybody tracking with me? Okay. Should we draw the analogy properly? And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked out the word. And that's like the cares and the richer, riches and the pleasure of this life. Just not the devil, just you being pulled away and enticed by your own desires. I just don't have time. There's just so many, like, if I push really hard, I can at least get 25 hours of screen time this week. Like, there's just, there's things I have to do that are more important than the word. You know? You know what I'm saying, Nunez? Like, I, you wanna get, I want to read the word, but I also want to hang out with Ann. So then now you've got to choose between God and Ann, and then we're going to find out what your priorities are. You know what I mean? We're going to find out what Ann's priorities are. She gave a little look, like, you getting in the way of my relationship. Not what I was trying to do. But others fell on good ground, on good soil, on the heart of good soil, soft and supple soil, and it yielded a crop, some 100-fold, some 30, some 60, depending on the, depending on the soil, depending on how, how well it rooted. For whoever has, to him he'll get more. If you take the word of God and you keep it and you plant it and you water it and you're committed to it, and you execute it, and you apply it, God will give you more wisdom. And wisdom is Christ. And wisdom comes with a whole lot of promises inside of the word that I'm not going to get into. But wisdom is Christ. But whoever does not have, because they chose not to keep it, even what he has will be taken away from him. I've been there in my relationship with God. Like, I've, I've, done, the, I've done the roller coaster. But everything in your life is being formed in the spiritual and it's so easy to receive the word of God, to walk away, and to not think maybe my priorities aren't right, maybe my life isn't in order, and we don't ever check that or put that in check, and there's like a message or something that was speaking or communicating to something that I was going through, and we never got full formation, full spiritual formation of that thing, whatever it may be, you apply said thing because we didn't stay in the word. Oh, and it came from the spiritual into the natural. We just didn't like the way it came out. And most Christians are fighting battles that they were never designed to fight. They're not. The word will make you suffer. It will make you sacrifice. Fasting hard. I like food. Telling people about Jesus. And, and, I, 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 and I, you guys know I don't like to talk about 
evangelism. I am big on Jesus. He laid hands on the sick, and he was like, don't, don't tell people. I was leading somebody to the Lord the other day, and there was a moment of awkwardness. It wasn't like a, it was like the, like the moment of silence that turned into the moment of, of, of awkwardness. Like, I didn't know if it was, I was like, are you mad? Are you getting ready to cry? Are we getting ready to fight? Like, what's going down? Like, I couldn't really, I couldn't really read the room. Because it got like one of these like weird like I don't know how many people get you guys have led to the Lord, but it just there there was a there was a moment that was weird. It it pushed my it pushed my pride back a little bit. I was like, oh man, there's people around, and I know them. I know people, and this is probably getting ready to get a little spiritually awkward. Normally I'm like I'm up for the moment, but it just I had a little moment where I was like, what's how? How is this reaction going to go? Like, there may be a lot of attention that's getting some. He may be getting ready to get mad. He may be getting ready to tell me that he hates Jesus. We got him to the Lord, and 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 he looked looking at him. I think he could have killed me. Enough people around. I think I would have made it out. I think I'm still like quick enough and swift enough. And I'm not. I'm down for a fight. But I was just. I was edging him up. He looked a little crazy. He looked a little wild. Looked a little bit like a head case. That came out on the other side. Super saved. Like, I think, I think after you received Jesus, I was like, I'm probably taking a fight now because you look more normal than you did five minutes ago. But it hurt my pride for a moment. It really did. I did for a second. I was like, oh, man. And I don't, normally don't think this way, but I was like, who's around? I'm being honest with you guys. I'm just being transparent. That's a trial. That's a tribulation. A lot of us are creating our own mountains because we're not obeying God, and then we're climbing up those mountains, and we're getting to the other side, and I'm just going through trial. I'm just going through, is that, was it from God? Like, we have to be able to discern, but because the way we live our lives is determining what we go through. There are definitely trials and tribulations that are from God. Don't get it twisted. Don't twist what I'm saying. I, most Christians, I'm telling you this, black and white, most are dealing with trials and tribulations that were never designed by God. They're just distractions. Because people aren't walking with God. And if you're not walking with God, anything can happen. I mean, God took the Israelites in the desert. Why do you say it all the time, Ryan? Because it was supposed to be an 11-day journey, and 40 years later, it was not the will of God on their life. He was taking 11 days, get to, the, get, to the, get to the promised land. And 40 years later, they're just meandering in a circle, fighting battles they were never meant to, fa- never meant to fight. And their biggest battle was them. They were in their own way, just complaining and remaining, just sinning and staying. Moses separated himself. He went up to the mountain. He prayed. He fasted. He sought God. He got his reward. They died in the desert. Wisdom demands wisdom demands divine order. Wisdom is this. It's knowledge applied. Understand this. You read a book. You get to the end of the book, you look back, you gain understanding. You have to understand the difference between wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because knowledge in and within itself has no power. The Bible says that knowledge puffs up. What does that mean? It makes you arrogant. It makes you arrogant. Smart people get arrogant. It's until you take in knowledge and you apply it, you execute it, then it becomes wisdom. We live life forward and we gain understanding looking backwards. It's like, oh, I went through that situation with God's word, I executed God's word, there was transformation in my life, now I look back and I'm like, okay, I understand something at a higher level. Does everybody understand? Like, you can't read three chapters of a book and then be like, I understand the topic. Or no chapters of the book, if you did school the way that I did. Proverbs 4, 7 says this, wisdom is the principal thing. It's the most important thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all your wisdom, make sure that you get some understanding. Because if I didn't have understanding of the word, I, there's a lot of things I know inside of the word that I, I wouldn't teach them still. Because I know that I've got to understand them at a really high level. Whenever you begin to, whenever you begin to teach something, it kind of comes out complex and convoluted. Like until you know it really well. And then you want to know what happens whenever you know it really, really well? You realize that, it was all, that, it's, that, that the most important parts of it are fundamental and simplistic. There's simplicity in Christ. The most important part of your relationship with God is prayer, fasting, and the Word of God. Don't get it twisted. Don't get, into, don't get so wrapped up into theology that you forget to read the Word of God, to pray, fast, and tell people about Jesus. Is everybody tracking with me? No, the other parts are important. It's important that we study the Word of God. 
I need to know how to deal with my enemies. The Word of God says that to pray for those that abuse you. Bless those who persecute you. I've, I've, got, to know how to, I've got to know how to deal with my enemies. There's other things that I, got, that I have to know. But if we get away from the fun, fundamentals, we're going to get away from Christ, right? When was the last time you led somebody to Jesus? Doll. And but, what did you say at the beginning, Bush? How do you handle the Word of God? Because things become so familiar, like you're in here, you, you hear the sermon on YouTube, you're like, I got 60 seconds of my Todd on Instagram because I sinned and I didn't listen to Bush and delete all my social media apps. I got 60 seconds of Furtick. I got 30 minutes of Bush. Some of it was good. Some of it I zoned out and checked out. And dude, check out because Felipe is going to ask you what I said whenever he got home. So you better have it all. You better have it all in your mind. You better have it all ready to go. And we just treat it as common. So we come in and we leave the same way, getting ready to go do the same, same thing, live the same way. Tomorrow will be the same day. It's not a year later, a year greater. I, I don't, most people are getting worse with experience. I don't know who said that. It was all, I, somebody said that one time, and I was like, that's close to the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. We need people with more experience. I'm, the, the, world's, the world's making people worse. If you're not reading the Word of God, if you're not going through things with the Word, you're not getting better with experience and with time. It's not a year later, a year greater. Like, that's not in the Bible. Nobody ever said that. It's not about the taking of time. It's about the upper level movement of your mind. So a man thinks, so he becomes. You've got to think better, which means you've got to read better. You've got to study better. You've got to understand the word of God better because it'll make you think at a higher level. God said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My, higher, my ways are higher than your ways. We quote that. I've said this several times recently. We quote that whenever people are going through trial and tribulation. The subtitle there is the abundant life of Christ. He wasn't saying, ha ha, I'm smarter than you. I think higher than you. He was like, look, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And the greatest level of accountability is what? It's getting to a certain level and bringing people up to that level. It's not looking down and just telling everybody everything they were doing wrong. God, God doesn't have that mentality and attitude. He's trying to call you upward to a higher level. Your life has to be in order. There has to be simplicity, and simplicity comes through elimination. And this is the last week that we're going to talk about order, but I just I have to challenge you one more time. Sit down and write all the things that you do. Eliminate things that are not fruitful. Eliminate things that are in the way of you getting to bed on time, getting up on time, and spending time in God's Word. What does your life look like 365 days from now if you are with God an hour every day? If, if I would have never heard somebody say, I pray for four hours every morning, I would have never thought it. I would have never thought to do it. Never went across my mind. Because some people are so flippant with their, with their relationship with God. Time spent equals relationship. You'll never know God more than the amount of time you spend with him. What does your life look like 365 days from now if you were in the word an hour every day? In the word. Praying. Journaling. Focusing on the things that are in formation in the spiritual and how they're going to come out in the natural, whatever that thing may be. What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to look like? Whatever that thing is, what do you want it to look like? Now, let me challenge you again. On the time you get up and your ability to pray over it every day and to speak the word over it and to know the promise connected to it inside of the word. It is, point number two, it is important that you allow the word to de determine the, the order of your life. Jesus used, he just gave you a picture of the sower, right? And he uses agriculture and war and finances a lot to teach. And the interesting thing about agriculture is, is it's like it, there's science behind it, right? It's not just something growing in the wild. Are you guys tracking with me? Agriculture, you like cultivate the soil, you cultivate the ground, and you like plant things in order. Are you guys tracking with me? And God's giving you a picture of your relationship with God, like things are going to happen in order. So God's always going to bring you back to the last place where you obeyed God. He's always going to bring you back to the last place where you relation with God. So it's not a year later, a year greater. It's not like you're just becoming more like Christ because you're 29 now and you were 22 then whenever you became a Christian. I'll see people walk into the church, literally, listen to this if you don't catch anything else. I'll, I'll see people walk into the church, and they will obey God over the course of just a few weeks, and they will be 10 years beyond people that have been here for 20 years. 
just melting just because the word of God has become common and familiar in their life. Don't let it happen to you. Don't treat the word of God as if it's common and familiar. God said, I will look on this man who's humble and contrite, who's teachable. That's what that means, who's moldable, who's shapeable, and who trembles at my word. It's important to God that your life is in order, that your priorities make sense, that he is first, that you take the time to sit down and really process and register what are my priorities, what's the first thing I do? What am I thinking about most of the day? Because the Bible says whenever you meditate on his law during the morning and the day and the night, you will have success and prosperity. You will move forward humbly in the midst of adversity everywhere you go. Everywhere you set foot, you will gain ground for God's kingdom. That your life isn't about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Most of your problems are about you. If you just thought less about you, you would have less problems. If you prayed more, you would have less to complain about. If you just thought about you less, you would have less problems. It's hard to have a problem whenever you're not thinking about you because it's your problem. Have you ever thought about it? How can you have a problem if it's not about you, if you're not thinking about you? What do you do whenever you think about you? You make the problem bigger. The greatest problems that I face is more prosperity. No, when you get spiritually older, like you don't know. Like you don't know what you don't know. I'm like, it was, it was easier with 50 employees. 210 employees? God bless. Like they all, got, they all have a problem. All of them have a problem. All of them need a telephone call, call tomorrow. All 200 of them. And they, all, they only need three minutes of my time, which really means 30 minutes of my time. I told one of them, I was like, you realize I could spend 15 hours on the telephone today and never get through you all. Because you all have a problem. Because you're all thinking about you. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Those are the problems that you want to have. Not your own problems. I'm praying for prosperity, for things to move forward humbly in the midst of adversity. I know that prosperity is going to come with more problems. I know that prosperity has a purpose. It's a paradox. The purpose is platform. A platform for what? A platform for Jesus Christ. And if that's not the purpose of prosperity, then it becomes idolatry. I'm just trying to get you to think about the order of your life. Why are you praying for things to move forward? If, if I'm praying for prosperity, I want more platform. I want more impact. I want to minister more to Jesus Christ. I don't want it for me. I've, I've lost that. The word of God did that. The word of God did that. The word of God killed that. That's the job of the word. God's more concerned about how you die than how you live. That's the paradoxical nature of the word of God. That as you decrease, he increases. And as you try to increase, he decreases. Good. You guys are smart. Divine order does this. It puts a mandate on the most important things, which are the things you cannot see. God created the heavens, then the earth. Your job is to bring things that are in the heavens to the earth. And the most important things you can bring are the things that you cannot see. Love, grace, mercy, the things that we can give people that you cannot see, they are the most powerful thing. They approached the disciples at one point. Uh, they were like, gold and silver, I have none. But what I can bring you, I bring in the name of Jesus Christ. I can bring you a lot. I can, make you, I can, I can help make you whole. I can bring you peace. I can, I, can, I can bring you the answer for the unforgiveness that's in your heart. This is the next level of forgiveness, and this is the last thing I'll say. When you forgive people, you got to understand that hurt people hurt people. When you can look somebody in the eye that's hurt you, this is the next. This, this is the next level. This is the next layer. This is what love really is. This is whenever it transcends just human nature. 
when you can look at somebody in the eye and understand that they hurt you because they were hurt and hurt people hurt people, and you can look them square in the eye and let them know that you forgive them and that you want them to forgive them and that you want them to be okay and that you want them to know that they are loved and that you want them to know that you know that they were hurt and that's why they hurt you, this is the next layer of love. That's the next level. But it's just nothing's about you. And whenever your life is in order and your priorities are right, you can get to this level and this layer of love. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that it never returns void in our life, that it accomplishes everything, God, that we've set it out to do, Father. I thank you, God, for every heart represented in this place, Father God, that you would soften those hearts right now, Father. I pray, God, that you would help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts, to examine our life, Father, to examine the things, the secrets in our life, God, that are making us sick, God. The places of chaos, the places of disorder, God, I pray that you would expose them now in the name of Jesus, Father God. The, the sin that separates us from God, that keeps us distracted, God, that creates disorder in our life, Father God, I pray that you would expose it, Father. Help us to make strong stands. Give us the courage, Father, to take strong stands, God, to really delete apps from our phone, God, to eliminate relationships and friendships, God that aren't, aren't promoting our fire and our hunger for you, God. Eliminate habits, God. Eliminate, God, places that we go and, and, and things that we do, things that are just time wasters, God. Expose those things to us, God, that we could live for you at a higher level, God. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for tonight. I thank you, God, that we take your word serious that we handle it properly, God, because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.